Hi, it's Friday, it's April 30th, and it's day to day with St. Joseph, and I promised you we would watch a, a YouTube video of the Brothers Grimm and a story that involves St. Joseph. And so, let's get right to it. And welcome to Bedtime Stories. My name is Frank Pedora, and I'll be reading to you a Grimm Brothers fairy tale entitled the legend of St. Joseph in the forest. There was once upon a time a mother who had three daughters, the eldest of whom was stupid and bad-tempered. The second, however, was much better, though she too had her faults. But the youngest was a pious, good child. The mother was odd in her tastes, for she loved the eldest the most and could not endure her youngest daughter. And therefore, she often sent the poor girl out into the forest, where she hoped to be rid of her, hoping that she would wander about so as to lose herself. Her guardian angel, however, and such an a one watches over every good child, did not forsake her, but led her always along the right road. Once the angel seemed to have forsaken her, and the child wandered on by herself. She walked on till evening, and then saw a light burning in the distance. She went up to it, and found a little cottage, and knocking at the door it opened, and she came to a second door, where she knocked again. An old man with a snow-white beard and a venerable countenance opened it, and he was no other than St. Joseph. In a friendly voice he said, Come in, dear child, sit down on my stool by the fire, and warm yourself. I will fetch you some clear water if you are thirsty, but I have nothing for you to eat but a couple of roots, and those you must scrape and cook for yourself. With these words, St. Joseph handed her the roots, and carefully peeling them, she took up a small saucepan and put them in. Then she added to them some water and the bread which her mother had given her, and put them over the fire till they were boiled down to a soup. When it was done, St. Joseph said, I am so hungry. Give me some of your broth to eat. This the girl very willingly did, and gave him more than she took for herself. Still, however, with God's blessings, she had quite sufficient. As soon as they had finished their supper, St. Joseph said, It is time now to go to bed. But as I have only one bed, do you lie down in that, and I will make my bed of straw. No, no, she replied. Keep you your own bed. The straw is tender enough for me. St. Joseph, however, would carry her to the bed, and there lying her down, she went to sleep as soon as she had said her prayers. The next morning when she awoke, she would have said good morning to St. Joseph, but she could nowhere see him. She arose and looked for him, but she could not find him in any corner, and while she searched, she perceived hanging behind the door a sack full of money on which it was written that it was for the maiden who had slept there that night. She took the sack, and jumping merrily along under its weight, took it to her mother, who was obliged for once to be satisfied with her youngest daughter. The following day, the second daughter also took a fancy to go into the forest, and her mother gave her a much larger pancake and a piece of bread. It happened to her the same as it had to her sister. Towards evening, she came to the cottage where St. Joseph lived and he told her to make herself some soup. As soon as it was ready, he said as before, I pray you give me some of that to eat, for I am so hungry. The child told him to eat with her, and when afterwards he proposed to give her his bed and lie himself on the straw, she said to him, Share the bed with me. There is room enough for us both. But St. Joseph laid her down in the bed by herself and slept on the straw. And by the next morning, when she awoke, he had disappeared. Behind the door, she found a small bag of gold, as long as her hand, and on it was written that it was for the maiden who had slept there that night. She took the bag and hastened home to her mother, but she kept secretly two pieces of gold for herself. Now, the eldest sister became covetous, and the next morning she prepared to go to the forest. Her mother gave her several pancakes, as many as she'd like, and not only bread, but cheese. About evening, she arrived like her sisters at the cottage of St. Joseph, and found him there. She was also bidden to cook her soup, and 
when it was ready, St. Joseph said, I am so hungry. Give me some of your soup to eat. But the maiden replied, Wait until I am satisfied, and then when I leave, you shall have. So she went on eating till she had nearly finished, and St. Joseph had only the scrapings of the basin. The good old man, however, offered her his bed, and said he would lie on the straw. This kindness she took, as if it were her due, and she let the saint lie down on his hard couch. The next morning, when she awoke, he had disappeared, but she cared nothing about that, and thought only of the bag of gold, which she expected to find behind the door. She certainly did see something lying there, but because she could not exactly tell what it was, she bent herself down so that her nose touched it. It stuck to her nose, and when she stood up and looked at herself, she found to her terror that it was a second nose growing from the first. She began to howl and shriek, but to what purpose? She could not help seeing her nose because it was so long. She ran out of the house with a loud cry, and ran on till she met St. Joseph, and as soon as she saw him, she fell on her knees and begged him to take away the second nose. Out of pity for her, he did at least remove it and gave her two pennies. As soon as she reached home, her mother met her at the door and asked her what she had received. She told a lie and answered, A great sack full of money, but I've lost it on the way. Lost it, repeated the mother. Then let us look for it again. And catching her daughter's hand, she dragged her back to search. At first she wept and would not go, but at length she consented, and on they went. At every step they took, snakes and lizards started up, so many that they could not guard them off. And soon, one stuck its fang into the breast of the daughter, and she fell dead. And then another pierced the foot of the mother, because she had not brought her child up better. That was a Grimm Brothers fairy tale entitled The Legend of St. Joseph in the Forest. Thank you for listening. Good night. Well, the Brothers Grimm are pretty grim, aren't they? Most of their stories end kind of strange, but there's always seems to be a lesson or a way out. You know, you think of Rumpelstiltskin, right? And you think of the girl and she has to spin gold out of, out of hay and... A little strange man comes in and does it for her. And, well, after three times, she gets to be the queen. But she's promised a firstborn to him. Remember that story? And the only way out of it is if she can think of his name. She can say his name. And somehow it leaks out. Seems like the lesson there is there's, there's always a way through. It may be quite seemingly impossible, but there's always a way through. And in the story, the woman finds her way through. Hansel and Gretel, another great story. So St. Joseph is in this story. So that's interesting that Joseph is the one in the woods. And they go out to see him. Now, I imagine that the three daughters have grown up without a father, okay? Or at least there was a father, but he's been gone, but they remember him and how good he was. But the mother, not at all, and she's worldly. And so the oldest one goes out searching for the father first. And I think St. Joseph is the foster father. He is the one that comes in, and he enkindles in her all of the uh, experiences she once had with her father. And and uh, she's good, and she comes back, and she's better for it. But it's all misinterpreted as maybe we can get something out of this guy in the woods. And the mother sends the second daughter, but with things to entice him to bring back something, and she brings back gold, and the girl keeps two gold pieces for herself. She doesn't trust even the mother. And then the third one goes, and she's the one most like the mother. And you can see how selfishly she acts in that third encounter. But Joseph is kind all, all, nonetheless all three times. But he's not there in the morning each three times. There's a meaning in that, isn't there? 
And so we're still left on our own. Joseph comes to help us. He comes to encourage what is already started in us. Um, the goodness, the righteousness, the justice, the, the honesty, right? But in the end, it has to come down to ourselves. Well, the mother and the daughter come out and they go out into the dark, into the woods, and they think they can take it all on. And they can't. And the woods end up taking her. And I think the darkness takes to way too many people today. They just overthink, not overthink, they overestimate uh, their ability to work things out. Only God provides the way through, the way out. The devil always leads us to death, to the dead end. This is Father Barry and our day-to-day -day with St. Joseph.